century. So I thought it was necessary to update that. Another addition to this book that is not at all in the original is the inclusion of two case studies of local geology. Ralph wrote one on the geology of the Michigan Basin, and uh, I wrote one on the Sierra Nevada in California. And I think those are important because a, a lot of the science in the book deals with specific topics. Radiometric dating shows that the Earth is very old, or uh, sediment accumulation shows that the Earth is very old or something. But if you can apply that to an actual area and show just how complicated the geology is, I think it really drives home the point. If you take the Sierra Nevada, for example, there's just so many events that have to be accounted for. Uh, the, the, you have a complex sequence there that has to be uh, dealt with. And uh, so I think these case studies are an important addition to, to the new book. I'd like to pick up on a word that you said, that uh, it's all Ralph's fault. Uh, I'm an English teacher, so I'm very interested in the process of writing and in rhetorical choices. So I want to ask you two questions about that. The first has to do with process of writing as collaborators. Um, and what you learned from that, maybe what surprised you, what would you do it again and with someone else? Uh, what did, what did you learn from <coughs> writing as collaboration? You want me to go first? Well, <clears throat> the final stages of writing involved our actually shredding all the text that we had individually written one block at a time over the span of, what, about six weeks, six, seven weeks, something like that. So Dave and I would face off uh, every afternoon for about four days a week and we'd work through a chapter or the bulk of a chapter and that was awful <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, I, and I'm sure it was for Dave too but you know you have all your pet phrases that all your all your overuses of certain words all that sort of stuff come to the front and uh, we were merciless with each other's text, <laughs> absolutely merciless. And just, and it, it made for a unified text that was much higher quality than it would have, I, no doubt about it, than if one person had produced it. And in fact, we sent it off to InterVarsity expecting that an editor there would seriously overhaul the text. And they, they did very little to modify the text once we'd sent it off that final word. Almost nothing, almost nothing. Almost nothing. And I think that was a result of the, we, we also had friends who reviewed different chapters, and that was very significant too, but I think that final process where we went, and went over it word after word, and clause after clause, clause after clause, and, and shredded grammar, shredded word usage, uh, it, that was significant. Uh, Ralph makes it sound like what we had each individually written was just absolutely horrible. <laughs> we practically had to start from scratch. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't quite nearly that bad. But we did go over it line by line. And uh, he says it was awful, but we really had a lot of fun doing it. Yes. And part of the reason, well, there were a couple of reasons for it. One is that we sat out for a lot of that time in my back patio in Arizona, in the sunshine with the, being about 80 degrees and the mountains were in the background. It was just absolutely glorious. And we also had fun talking about what we would really like to have said at certain points. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think we had a lot of fun collaborating and, and yes. uh, I, would, I, would, I would love to do another project with Ralph. I don't, I think he might feel the same way. Yes. I'm willing to invent a topic to collaborate with him on <laughs> if we can't come up with a legitimate one. And I think that I can do that. My, my second question has with rhetorical choices. Uh, the first 150 pages or so of this book are a history, history of geologists. And this is where my snarky comment about dead white males comes in. Sorry about that. But... Um, there are wonderful diagrams in the back, but the first 150 pages are lots of these portraits. Um, so I want to know about the rhetorical choice of spending 150 pages 
doing basically a series of biographies and constructing those into a history of geologists, not so much geology, but geologists, a whole string of geologists. And I know that there's some of that in this book, but it's, it's again, greatly expanded. And I just wonder if you would talk a little bit about that and uh, whether you have some favorites among the people you wrote about, but particularly, first of all, why you decided on that rhetorical choice. History is important. Uh, I, th I think it's very important for, for Christians to understand how we got to this point of realizing that the earth is old. And it's especially important because a lot of the people who were involved in developing that idea were themselves Christians. They are people who wrestled with the idea themselves that the earth, hey, the earth is a lot older than what we know now. And uh, so I think it's important for people to realize that uh, for me to say it now or for anybody to say it now is, is not some brand new thing that just popped into the head of this heretic. It's, it's got a long established tradition uh, of the involvement of Christians and many of the finest geologists of the 19th century were themselves uh, Christian people. And I think it's also important, not just from, from the point of view of uh, the development of geology itself, but for showing Christian people how uh, theologians, uh, prominent, prominent uh, Christian leaders, uh, dealt with the issues too. And it's, it's hardly, uh, at least in the last two centuries or so, hardly monolithic that they all thought the earth was young and that we have to adopt six 24-hour days. So you can bring in the idea of uh, the days being long periods of time. It shows up in the, the late 1800s, or late 18th century. Uh, you can show the appearance of the, the gap theory where you plug in a whole bunch of geologic history between verses 1 and 2 of Genesis 1. That shows up a couple of centuries ago. So these are not new ideas at all. They've been around for quite a while. So again, when you come up with a different interpretation of Genesis 1, then the now, it doesn't necessarily mean you're some far out person. You're standing within a, a solid tradition of Christian thinking. Do you have any favorites, Ralph? I guess, if I can, I yeah. add a comment on the days. One of the, uh, of course, one of the common misapprehensions of people is that there's this radical polarization between science and Christianity. And of course, some people make it their business to exacerbate that polarization. And so we did also write this volume for scientists who might be looking at the field themselves, whether Christian or not. And it would be good, it would also be good to point out to that audience who have largely been indoctrinated in the notion that science is at war with Christianity, and of course, who find some evidence for that in, in the writings of younger creationists, uh, to remind them also that their, their discipline was developed in the main in the 17, 1800s by Christians. So this notion of polarization, yeah. If I can mention one of my favorites, uh, we don't really dwell on him at any great length. We sort of introduced the book with him, and that's Hugh Miller. Um, Hugh Miller was a, a Scottish stonemason and a, a, a Christian. And during his stonemasonry work, he got really interested in the fossil fish that he or other uh, quarrymen found in the, the rocks. So he developed an interest in geology and became quite a very good amateur paleontologist. And at the same time, Hugh Miller was a, a very good writer, wrote a lot of different uh, books that were quite popular in Scotland and was very active in the affairs of the Free Church of Scotland and became the editor of its main church magazine, The Witness. And uh, Miller not only edited it, but would write a, a weekly or monthly column, however often it was. And a lot of his columns in, in this church magazine were about geology. <laughs> Try doing that today. <laughs> um, I don't know whether I should say anything or not about with, about this, but uh, right now I'm in a, a church denomination 
which is quite large, and I know of at least eight geologists 